What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Kangaroo Black coming back once again with another game preview and score prediction for week seven. The number one Georgia Bulldogs versus the mighty Vanderbilt Commodores. And I'll just start out by talking about these common these uh, Vanderbilt Commodores uh, under the tutelage of Clark Lawyer, who's coming into this game at 2 and 5, 0 oh and 3 in the conference. Vanderbilt has been a terrible team ever since I've been in this world. I'm going to just put it that way. I mean terrible. If it was up to me, Vanderbilt would, e would not even field a football pro pro program anymore. All right, but they're trying to come up, renovating the stadium and every damn thing. But guess what? In this game, it is not going to help them one bit. I mean, one bit. Vanderbilt, that's the team that need to go out and buy them some players. That's no lie. But as far as this game, this game, it ain't going to take long for this video. This game is going to be a straight up, a straight up, no contest. Vanderbilt need to forfeit the game. Put it that way. But anyway, Vanderbilt, all right. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Vanderbilt, offense is terrible. Only average 367 yards a game. So, I ain't going to say terrible. I'm not going to say terrible, okay? It's not terrible. Matter of fact, let's see. Let's look at Vanderbilt score for, I, I mean, they're, they're, the, the teams they played anyway. They beat Hawaii 35 28 on seven points. Alabama AM 47 13. Okay. Wake Forest beat them 36 20. Nevada. Las Vegas, 40 to 37. They lost to Nevada, Las Vegas. Oh, my goodness, Vandy. That is terrible. Then they lost to Kentucky, 45-28. Then Missouri, 38-21. Florida, 38-14. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Nevada, Las Vegas. How you lose to them? But anyway, uh, Vandy, it's just going to be a long season just like every season for you. So, Coming into this game, Vanderbilt is averaging 367 yards of offense per game. 275 passing, 92 rushing. They're giving up 421 yards, more than what they are averaging on offense. They're giving up 263 in the passing game, 157 in the rushing game. This is daggone terrible. But A.J. Swan, their quarterback, he have about 1,300 yards passing, 11 touchdowns and 7 interceptions in the backup, Ken Seals. Uh, 635 yards, six touchdowns to one interception. Okay, been on the way. Ain't no need to go through all of this. They, they do got seven interceptions on the season. Um, and I believe two fumble recoveries. So nine total turnovers for the Vanderbilt Commodores. So, but it ain't going to make no kind of difference. They just don't have the athletes to contend with these Georgia Bulldogs. Vanderbilt better stick to damn baseball. That's all I got to say. But uh, they might need to take some of these football athletes and put them on the baseball team because, uh, hey, this football team is uh, all the way at the bottom of the barrel. I'll just put it that way. But anyway, let's talk about these Georgia Bulldogs, number one team in the country, coming off a big win against these daggone Kentucky Wildcats. Got, old, got the head ball coach of the Kentucky Wildcats, Mark Stoops. Disgruntled, okay? So they beat them that bad. But anyway, these Georgia Bulldogs, they got athletes all, the field, all over the field. Coming off the win against Kentucky, they look the best they done looked all season. And they'll probably even look even better against that on, on Vanderbilt. You know, I'm pretty sure they will. Because anyway, uh, Carson Beck is coming into his own. Uh, they letting him air that ball out. So, hey, it is what it is, you know. Oh, daggone, uh, uh, uh. Brock Bowles continuing to do his thing, looking like a man-child. Then hopefully uh, some of these running backs that's injured for Georgia, Georgia can get some playing time. Uh, hopefully Lad McConkin can get on the field and get healthy and, and look at least look healthy. I don't think he's 100% yet. But uh, no, matter who, <laughs> no matter who Georgia put on the field this week, they're going to get the daggone win. And I'm quite sure a lot of young players will get to play in this game, offensively and defensively, be just like last week where they can play their second and third team and uh, Carson Beck can be sitting down 
he probably can sit the whole first half. I mean, second half. He probably can sit out the middle of the second quarter. It'll probably be that out of hand. If if Vandy give Georgia any type of dag on a, a issue, that will be a big surprise. I wouldn't give a damn if it's in the first quarter. That would be a big, big surprise. Just putting it out there. So we already know who's going to win this game. It's just a matter of how much. <laughs> I'll put it that way. And uh, if Georgia come out like they did last week, Carson Beck probably have five or six touchdown passing with another over 400 yards passing. Probably four, over 400 yards passing. I'll put it that way. I think he had 397 last week. He probably go over that this week if they come out like they did last week and he play as long as he did last week, okay? So, Clark Leal, I'm going to tell you right now, if Kirby Smart got the ball and he got a 55-3 to three lead, three minutes left in the game, he'll probably still be throwing it. And if he can score, he's going to score, and I don't blame him, okay? Because guess what, Clark Leal? It's your job to stop him, which I don't think. Nothing you do will be able to stop the Georgia Bulldogs. So, let me go ahead and make my score prediction. My score prediction for this game, Georgia Bulldogs. I'm going to keep it on the low end. I'm going to keep it on the low end for Vanderbilt. Georgia Bulldogs. 55. That's the lowest I can go. <laughs> yeah, put up another 50 piece this week. All right. Georgia, 55. And I'm going to be nice to Vandy and get it himself. 55-7, Georgia Bulldogs. That's my final score, and I'm sticking with it. Roll damn tie.